Our learning targets today are, I can determine whether or not a relationship is a function, I can complete function tables, and I can use function tables to find function rules. So first, how do we determine if a relationship is a function? Well, every input has to have exactly one output. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say um, I ask you, here I'm going to draw you. This is you. I ask you, hey, what class are you in? And you say math. And I'm like, cool. And then I ask Susie, hey, what class are you in? And she says math. Um, can you both be in math class? Yeah, you're probably in math class together right now. What if I ask Tommy, hey, what class do you have third period? And he says, oh, I have ELA and I have science third period. Can you have ELA and science at the same time? No. Can you be in two classrooms at the same time? No, unless you're um, that Hermione from that Harry Potter movie. She has that necklace that she can like turn back time. But anyway, every input, every X value has to go to one output, one Y value, kind of like a room. It's not a function if there's an input that's asked to go to more than one output. Just like it's impossible if one student is expected to be in two rooms at the same time. So let's go through some examples and see if we can identify if these are functions. Three goes to one, five goes to two, seven goes to three, nine goes to two, and 11 goes to one. Is this a function? It is because every X value is only assigned one Y value. Now it's true that three is going to one and 11 is going to one. But that's okay, just like it's okay for two students to be going to the same math classroom. What we're really looking for is, is three asked to go to two different places at the same time? No. So this is a function. So we're going to write function because all inputs have only one output. All right, next one. One goes to four, two goes to six, three goes to eight, four goes to ten. 5 goes to 12. Is this a function? Yes, because every x value is only expected to go to one y value. So we are going to say again, function, all inputs have only one output. All right, next one. Negative 2 goes to 1. Negative 3 goes to 2. Negative 2 goes to 3. Negative three goes to four. Negative two goes to five. Is this a function? No, because here negative two is expected to go to one, three, and five. That's like if I expected you guys to be in ELA, science, and math at the same exact time. It's impossible. Negative three is expected to go to two and four at the same time. That's also making it not a function. So we're going to say not a function, inputs have multiple outputs. All right, here, one goes to negative nine, two goes to negative eight, three goes to negative seven, four goes to negative six, four goes to negative five. Is this a function? No, because here four is expected to go to negative six and negative five, and that makes it not a function. So we're gonna say not a function, input four has multiple outputs. All right, what if we were given a graph? If we were given a graph, there's something called the vertical line test or the VLT, and it's a really easy way of determining whether or not a relationship is a function. So we're gonna use the vertical line test the VLT to see if these are functions or not. So here's what the vertical line test is. Any vertical line that I make, here I'm gonna make them a little bit thicker. Any vertical line that I make must only intersect the relationship at one point at most to be a function. So I'm making vertical lines. Do any of these vertical lines 
go through the function more than once. I'm just seeing they go through the function one time each. So this is a function. All right, let's try the vertical line test on the next one. So here it doesn't go through at all, but that's okay. Here, this vertical line goes through one time. That's what we want to see. But look here, it fails the vertical line test right here because it, the vertical line intercepts the relationship at two different points. So we're going to say not a function fails the vertical line test. Okay, next one, is this a function? Let's make some vertical lines and let's see if they ever pass through more than once. Uh, they all only pass through at, at most one time. So we are gonna say this is a function. If you were asked for a reason of why this is a function, you can always say it passes the vertical line test. Okay, next page. State whether the relationship is a function and explain why or why not. So let's go through this first one. Negative six goes to four, negative two goes to one, one goes to negative three, and three goes to negative five. This is a function. And the directions do say explain why or why not. So I'm going to say every input has only one output. Okay, next, is this a function? Five goes to four, two goes to one, zero goes to negative two, negative three goes to one. Now you may say, wait, I see something here. I see that two goes to one and negative three goes to one. But that's okay, kind of like it's okay if Matt goes to math class and Emily goes to math class. They can be in math class together as long as they're not expected to be in two different places at once. So this is a function because every input has only one output. Okay, next one. Four goes to two and four goes to five. Stop right there. Four is expected to go to two and five at the same time. This is not a function because the input four goes to two outputs, two and five, which makes it not a function. Okay, now let's look at some ordered pairs and we're gonna determine if they are functions or not. So two goes to five, four goes to negative two, three goes to three, five goes to four, negative two goes to five. Is this a function? Yes, because all inputs have only one output. Next, six goes to negative one, negative four goes to two, five goes to two, four goes to six, six goes to five. Is this a function? Did you catch that six goes to negative one and six goes to five? That'd be like asking a student to go to two different classrooms at the same time. That is not a function because the input six has two outputs, negative one and five. All right, next one. Y equals two X minus five. Now guys, um, back when we did linear equations, that unit, unit seven, we had to graph these on a coordinate plane. So for example, if this is the X axis and this is the Y axis, this line would intersect the Y axis at negative five, and then it had a positive slope of two, which means that it would look like this. Okay, now would this line pass the vertical line test? I'm gonna draw some vertical lines. All the vertical lines are just gonna go through this line at most once. I'm gonna say this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Y equals 11. So let's talk about what that would look like. So Y equals 11 has a Y intercept of 11 and it has a slope of zero. So it looks like this. Now, would that pass the vertical line test? In other words, would all the vertical lines only go through at most once? And the answer is yes. So I would say this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. 
okay, these graphs are already done for us. Is this first one a function? And yes, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. All right, this next one, is this a function? Well, let's just make some vertical lines and really make sure. So that would pass the vertical line test. That would pass the vertical line test, only goes through once. Uh, let's see. Passes the vertical line test. Ooh, right there. It fails the vertical line test because it goes through right here and right here. So this is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Okay, what do you guys think about this next one? Would this one be a function? I'm going to draw a vertical line right here. And do you guys see how it's going to go through the relationship twice? So this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So first, in a function, each input is related to exactly one output. That's what we really were stressing in the last few pages. A function table, which is what we're about to go through, displays the ordered pairs that follow the function rule. So here's a function rule, y equals x minus 4. And we're going to complete the function tables using the given function rules. So if every y is just x minus 4, then let's figure out what these y values must be. OK, I'm zoomed in a little bit. So my first x is negative 8. So I'm going to do negative 8 minus 4. And I get negative 12. So my first y value is negative 12. The ordered pair would be negative 8, negative 12. OK, next, negative 5. So I'm going to do negative 5 minus 4. And I get negative 9. So my next ordered pair would be negative 5, negative 9. 0. So I would do 0 minus 4. And I get negative 4. Okay, and I'm writing a negative 4. So my next ordered pair would be 0, negative 4. Okay, pause the video and do the next two. All right, you should have gotten negative 2 and then 12. All right, next one. The function rule is negative 6x plus 2. So we're going to go through each of these x values and plug them in, starting with negative 3. So we'll do negative 6 times negative 3 and then add 2. Well, negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18 plus 2, which would give me 20. My dog is snoring so loud. I'm so sorry. All right, the next one, negative 2. So I have negative 6 times negative 2, and then I'm going to add 2. Negative 6 times negative 2 is 12, so I have 12 plus 2, and that gives me 14. All right, pause the video and try the next three blanks. All right, go ahead and check your answers. You should have gotten negative 4, negative 28, then negative 64. All right, my next function rule, y equals 3x minus 8. So just going to start by plugging in negative 5. So 3 times negative 5, then I'm going to subtract 8. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Then I'm going to subtract 8, and you get negative 23. All right, pause the video and find out what the other y values are. All right, you should have gotten negative 14, negative 8, 1, and 16. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about today is how to find function rules. Sometimes you're given the function table and you're asked to find the function rule. For example, here, this table is completely filled out. So what equation represents that relationship? So here are some helpful hints. If the x column has consecutive integers, and this one does, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, look for an increasing or decreasing pattern in the y column, this column. That's the coefficient of x. So let's see here. To get from 7 to 8, we add 1. To get from 8 to 9, we add 1. To get from 9 to 10, we add 1. To get from 10 to 11, we add 1. So therefore, I know that my coefficient of the x value is 1. So I know that my function rule is going to start off with y equals 1, 
x. And the last thing you have to do is you have to find the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept always occurs when x equals 0. And when x equals 0, y is positive 9. So I'm going to say, okay, positive 9. And therefore, the function rule here is y equals 1x, or just x, plus 9. All right, let's do some more examples. If you cannot find a pattern, ask yourself, what has been added to or subtracted from the multiplication problem in the x column to get the answer in the y column? Okay, no problem. So let's take a look here. First of all, is the x column all consecutive integers? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, it is. So now let's look at the y column. Is there any rule here? Let's take a look. To get from 5 to 7, I have to add 2. To get to 7 to 9, I have to add 2. From 9 to 12, I have to add 2. From 11 to 13, I have to add 2. So therefore, I know that my equation is going to start with y equals 2x. Then, to find my y-intercept, I just need to look to see where x equals 0, where does the function go through the y-axis? And it says it goes through the y-axis at 5. So that is my y-intercept. So therefore, my function rule is y equals 2x plus 5. All right, we're going to do some more examples to really nail this down. So taking a look, are these in the x column consecutive? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes. Okay, it's really important to check that before you do the next step. All right, so what are these changing by each time? To get from negative 4 to 0, I have to add 4. To get from 0 to 4, I have to add 4. To get from 4 to 8, I have to add 4. To get from 8 to 12, I have to add 4. So that means that the coefficient must be 4. So my function rule is going to start off as y equals 4x. And then I have to look to see when x equals 0, because that's going to tell me my y-intercept. My y-intercept here is negative 4. So my function rule is y equals 4x minus 4. OK, let's do another one. Are these all consecutive integers? Yes. All right, let's take a look over here. What pattern are we seeing? Increases by 3, increases by 3, increases by 3, increases by 3. So my function rule is going to start with y equals 3x. And you're going to notice that there is no x equals 0. I don't know what x equals 0 is. So I'm going to actually just add it on right up here. When x is 0, what would y be? Well, let me just go backwards. If I had to go backwards 1, I'm going to have to subtract 3. So this would be negative 2. And that way, negative 2 plus 3 would give me that 1. So my y-intercept would have to be negative 2. And that would be my function rule. All right, guys, on this page from 20 to 24, I'd like you to try these on your own and then unpause the video and you can see the answers and check over your work. All right, you're back. So for this one, everything is going down by 2, going down by 2. So I'm going to say y equals negative 2x. And here's my y-intercept as of a positive one. For this next one, everything's going up by one, up by one. So I have y equals x. And then it doesn't give me the y-intercept. So I'm actually going to build onto my table. What would it be when x equals zero? So since I'm going this direction, I'm adding one. I'm going to have to take away one to go backwards. So this would be negative four. And this would be negative 5. So this would be y equals x minus 5. OK, for the next two, this is going down by 3, down by 3, and so on. So y equals negative 3x. Then my y-intercept is right there. 
minus 2. Y equals negative 3x minus 2. This one, going up by 1, going up by 1, up by 1. Every time, y equals x. My y-intercept's right here. It's 10, so I'm going to write plus 10. All right, last one. Complete the table, then write the function rule. So we're going up by 1, up by 1. So this would be negative 1, and this would be 0. So since I'm going up by 1 each time, it's y equals x. They did not give me when x equals 0, but if I add onto the table and I say, okay, x is 0, then this would have to be negative 5. So this is y equals x minus 5. All right, last page of this lesson. Look at the following function tables and the function rules used to complete the tables. So if the function rule is y equals x squared and my first x is negative 2, I'm going to find out what negative 2 squared is. And keep that in mind that that is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. 0 squared is 0 times 0, which is 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. Take a look at the pattern created. We have minus 3, minus 1, plus 1, plus 3. That's an unusual pattern from what we've seen today. But it is something to do with the squared exponent. So let's do another one. Um, if y equals x squared plus 4, and we're given negative 3 as my first x, I'm going to do negative 3 squared plus 4. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9 plus 4, and I get 13. Negative 2 squared plus 4 is negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Negative 1 squared plus 4 is 1 plus 4, which is 5. 0 squared plus 4 is 0 plus 4, which is just 4. 1 squared plus 4 is 1 plus 4, which is 5. 2 squared plus 4 is 4 plus 4, which is 8. And lastly, 3 squared plus 4 is 9 plus 4, which is 13. And if you look again, this is going down by 5, down by 3, down by 1, up by 1, up by 3, up by 5. If the y values have a pattern but it is not a constant increase or decrease, consider that the x values may be getting squared. So if you look at the pattern here, we're starting off subtracting 5 to get to the next x value, then subtracting 3 and subtracting 1. But then there's a shift, and all of a sudden we're adding 1, adding 3, and adding 5. Use the function table to write the function rules below. So first we see the x values are consecutive. So now we're going to look at our y values and see how they're increasing or decreasing. So we are subtracting 3 subtracting 1, then adding 1, and adding 3. This sort of pattern tells me that the x values could be getting squared. So let's consider what would happen if negative 2 was squared. If negative 2 was being squared, I would get 4. What would you have to add to then get to 6? You'd have to add on 2. If negative 1 was squared, you'd get 1. What would you have to add to that to get to 3? You'd have to add 2. If 0 was squared, you'd get 0. What would you have to add to that to get 2? You'd have to add 2. So the function rule here is y equals x squared, and you're going to have to add 2 once you square the x. And you'll also see that 2 right here for the y-intercept. Okay, next one. 
You'll notice that the x values are consecutive integers, so we're just going to have to look at the y values. Let's see, we're going down by 3, going down by 1, adding 1, adding 3. So this kind of pattern, I know it's y equals x squared. And if I look right here, I'll see that the y-intercept is 10. So it's y equals x squared plus 10.